a model steamboat named Edith. Part 1, taking a look at what's inside. But before I look at what's inside, let's have a look at the outside. This is an old fishing boat. It's an old model of an old fishing boat. It's quite ramshackle in places. Parts of it are very well made and other parts of it are not so good. And it's been modified over the years. It will have started off its life as a pond launch. By the look of it, someone's had a go in the past at fitting radio control to the rudder. There's a linkage at the stern. Time to look inside, and I wonder what I'm going to find. I'll remove this hatch and... And what have we here? A petrol or paraffin burner. This is no good at all, so that will go in the scrap bin. And what's in this part? There's a chimney adapter pipe which needs a bit of surgery. It's soft soldered and it's falling apart. And there's a boiler and there's a twin cylinder steam engine. The boiler is not looking too good though. This is the water gauge. And it almost reminds me of something that you would see on a shipwreck. Anyway, continuing on. From what I can see of this steam engine at the moment, it looks to be very well made, but I will have to remove it to get a final analysis. The propeller seems to rotate freely, but unfortunately it locks at one part of its travel. This may be something simple. I'll look at this in due course. I'm pleased to see that this boat has a very large rudder. Time for some special equipment. The only way I'm going to get this steam engine out of this boat is to use a very long, thin screwdriver. And luckily, I have one of those, so here goes. And after a while of messing about with very small screws that were quite tight in the wooden beams that hold the engine, I can withdraw the engine from the steamboat. This steam engine looks to me to be a Reeves Warrior type, and the engine also has a crankshaft driven water pump on the same bed plate. Here's the void from whence the engine came, and as you can see the propeller shaft rotates OK. Unfortunately, at the other end of the boat there is this thing. This is the boiler, and I'm always very sceptical when I look at these old boilers. If you don't know the history of a boiler and how much abuse it's had, the best thing to do with the boiler is to discard it and fit a replacement. It's just not worth taking any chances where pressure vessels are concerned. The most important part of this boat is the engine. This one to me looks to be good, but I can't tell until I run it. And obviously it's not been run for a long, long time, so I'm flooding it with machine oil. I will be using some of my other special oil, but I need to use very thin oil first to make sure it penetrates down into the bearings particularly if they are dry or gummed up with residue. The engine in the last model steamboat that I worked on for this customer was a Stuart Models twin compound launch and unfortunately it wasn't very well made and I had a lot of problems with it. I had to rebuild part of it and during the sailing it wasn't very powerful and a couple of times it had to be rescued because the engine stopped and with it being a compound it wasn't self-starting. And the good news with this engine, even if it's horrible, it's still going to be self-starting. We shall see. As with all my videos, none of this is staged. This is just as I got the engine out of the boat, and when I was shooting this video, this is genuinely the first run. I don't know whether it's going to run or not. I just hope it does. I'm putting some oil into the pipe to make sure that the cylinders are lubricated. It would be very foolish to run the engine without any lubrication in the cylinders. Time to connect the airline and put some air pressure into it. Well, I'm really pleased with this. I'm almost overwhelmed. It runs beautifully. I thought this was a very well-made engine. Definitely built by an engineer who knew his stuff. So it's time to apply some proper lubricating oil. This is my normal mixture of steam oil, machine oil, and as an anti-friction additive, some rapeseed oil, which is also known as canola oil. For this first test run I'm making sure that every moving part has got some lubrication. And it really is running well. I'm not putting too much pressure into the engine. There's only about 15 to 20 psi going in there. But it's quite powerful. And it's timed well. 
I can't fault it in any way. I'm not over-revving the engine because I'm not sure what's happening inside it in the valve chest and the cylinders. I did pump some oil into the airline, so really what should be coming out of the exhaust pipe, apart from compressed air, should be oil. So I'm going to put some more oil in and see what happens. And with this increase in oil in the steam line, the engine is starting to labour a little bit. I know what's happening here, I've seen it before and I have the solution. First of all I disconnected the airline, then I took the engine into the outer part of the workshop, sat it on the vice and heated up the cylinders with my blowtorch. And by heated up the cylinders, I don't mean I cremated the cylinders, I just warmed them up to about the same temperature they would be if it was running on steam. Then I put it back on the bench and whilst it was still warm, reconnected the airline. And immediately the engine bursts into life and runs a lot better. I'll stop talking for a while and let you listen to the engine. So what was the problem? Well, the cylinders were just very gummed up and the oil wasn't getting through. And instead of it being lubricating oil, it just became a sticky gum with the residue that was already in there. So by heating up the cylinders, everything starts to dissolve, the oil gets through, and now when I put my finger over the end of the exhaust pipe, it gets very oily very quickly. So a quick summary of the engine. It self starts in any position, runs like a sewing machine and is one of the nicest engines I've seen for quite a while. Which is more than I can say for the boiler. And look, it's still got water in it. I thought it was feeling a bit heavy. I wonder how old this water is. It's been in there for quite a long time. Anyway, the first thing to do is to see whether I can resurrect the water gauge and it's very unlikely. And this is what is known as de -zincification. I put hardly any pressure on the fitting at all, but it just snapped off. And the top one's the same, although it's broken off in a different place. The brass has got really brittle. The best material for fittings has always been phosphor bronze, but most of the time, the brass. And to be fair, I'm not being too scathing. They last about 50 years, so really, what's the point in making them very expensive out of phosphor bronze when brass does the job for quite a long time? I'll just take the rest of this out, just because I want to see what it's like. The pressure gauge checks out perfectly. It's a Bassett Loke pressure gauge. Bassett Loke made really good quality equipment in the day. And this pressure gauge is perfectly fine to be used on another boiler. I'm just removing the clack valve. And look at this, the boiler's almost full of water. So what conclusion do I come to with this boat? It's old. It's not quite as neat as the first one I worked on. But in my opinion, the model really captures the essence of an old steam-powered fishing boat. So what about the complexity of the rebuild? The boat is very old and it has some structural issues, which all can be put right by using modern materials. The ballasting of this boat is a problem. There's an enormous amount of ballast inside it and this puts a lot of strain on the hull. What I propose is to create a water tank in the entire bow area of the boat and that would be the ballast. And then the water can be pumped via the engine's water pump into the boiler and this would allow for much longer sailing times on the water. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.